certain business dealings between trustees that have no dealings with the community at all, but those are disclosed on the form. Why has the news of the financial crisis come out of nowhere? Wasn't someone tracking the shortfall who could have reached out much earlier to donors, alumni especially, to make up the difference? Well, um, it didn't come about to us as a, as a surprise. It was a surprise. And, and I want to say we're not in a crisis right now, but if major changes don't take place, we will be in a crisis in a few years. So there's no urgency for tomorrow, but you know, and, uh, shortly down the road there is. Uh, you know, on that, you know, I want to reassure everybody, we, we didn't get to the tuition question yet, but all the students that have been admitted to the school who are here will never be charged tuition. We, we assume that we have a contract with these students, and they will not be charged tuition. Uh, just to depart from the question for a moment, um, uh, the trustees meeting tomorrow, uh, there's been much talk about decisions being made at that meeting, so I said, just mention what will be happening at that meeting. Oh. The trustees normally meet at full board meetings three, uh, four times a year. It's quarterly meeting, and because that this is a hotbed issue and needs a lot of attention, we feel that we just need more meetings now than quarterly. But it's not good to wait three months until we each meeting. So just another interim meeting to be scheduled. There's no major decisions going to come out tomorrow. That's not the goal. It's just to keep everybody informed and to discuss what's going on. It's been suggested that the Board of Trustees meet once a semester in a community-wide forum such as this one. Uh, would the board be on board? <laughs> uh, again, I don't think that's the proper for the board. I think that's really the administration's job to deal with the community relations aspect of what takes place. Although we have, I, mean, I mentioned before about the memberships of the trustees, we have four alumni trustees that are put on the board by the Alumni Association. <coughs> Uh, each one serves a four-year term, and one rotates off every year. We also have the president of the Alumni Association, Peter Navier, who also sits on the board. So there is ways for the alumni community to get information to the board and to bring information back, as opposed to public hearings. Aware too that a lot of the trustees, and most of the trustees, don't have business lives, and they're very busy people. Some are from out of town, and they come into New York specifically for the board meetings every. Uh, three months, so that you have them come in for public care. It's just asking too much of these people. I mean, and again, it's the administration's role. Yeah, we also have a student rank on the uh, trustee also. Basically, and we've also recently uh, agreed to have certain alumni reps on some of the committees, as opposed to just the board, to be in furtherance of this transparency issue. After the uh, U.S. Fiscal crisis of 2008, the board accepted continued deficit spending, knowing that the earnings from its investment portfolio were down and draining the endowment. Was the board's intention to force the issue and turn the college from a partial tuition college, or a no tuition, or a college to a partial tuition or full tuition college by intentionally creating a fiscal crisis? Absolutely not. First of all, be aware that the issue of, of the question of tuition didn't just pop up. It's been on the table literally for over 20 years. It's just, this is the first time it's been out of the board. You know, it's always been an issue. Everyone says that you know, we can't sustain this model. It's been going on for a long time. We've gotten around that by taking steps like selling of assets, taking some money out of the endowment to make the deficit. You know, in, in one respect, the board has been doing exactly what you're asking here to do now. We've been doing everything possible so that we don't have to charge tuition. But we've come to a point where uh, the economy has been bad, which hurt us. Number one, the, the capital campaign was not completed successfully. We couldn't raise the money we wanted because the economy is down. We're getting a poor rate of return on the investment, uh, the invested cash that we have. So all of these have snowballed into a situation where you know tuition may have to be looked at again. And again, nothing's been decided about tuition. It's just one of the options that we're investigating. And we're investigating as many options as we can. We still consider tuition a last resort <coughs> strategy. Um, the rest of these are all rather pointed. Um, ever since the mid to late 90s, when the decision was made to reclassify the Cooper's tuition policy as, quote, full scholarship rather than, quote, tuition free in order to receive money from New York State's tuition assistance program, otherwise known as CAP. There have been rumblings among faculty, students, and alumni about the precarious financial situation of Cooper Union and about potential mismanagement by the Board of Trustees. 
how can the current board sort of designing demonstrate to the Cooper community that they are committed to doing right by the institution without doing it on the banks of students, faculty, and staff? Okay, uh, it's sort of like a loaded question because the beginning is not true. The reason that it was classified as a full tuition scholarship as opposed to free, in order to get the grants that the government offers to schools, we have to charge tuition so they can base their grants on the amount that we charge tuition. Right? Tuition now is rated at $38,500 a year. And I believe you all get a bill for that, but it's also offset by the equal amount of the scholarship dollars, so the net cost is zero. That's why it was changed, so that we can get the money from the state based on our tuition. It's not like a couple of years ago, the tuition was raised to the $38,500. It actually costs more than that to educate each student, because if you think there's 1,000 students, and operating budget of fifty million dollars, and it's fifty thousand dollars per student to run the school. Even to give you an idea, last weekend I was in Washington D.C. I'm a member of the Association of Governing Boards uh, Council and Board Chairs. And there were twenty chairmen or chairwomen from around the country. And the um, chairman, the new chairman at Dartmouth, where our president spent some time. He told me that the uh, he told us that the current tuition at Dartmouth is forty-one some one thousand dollars, with room and board and course students fifty-five thousand dollars a year, and he said that covers half of their costs. Because the most colleges that charge tuition, about half of their money comes from tuition. We don't have that luxury, so it's always a challenge to make ends meet. Can you ask the question again, please? Ask the question again. Uh, I'll run through it again, but uh, Mark is uh, oh, there, 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 There's no reason for anyone to resign or you know, to show anything because, like I said, you know, the, the, the suggestion that the monies were mismanaged without any facts to back up that up, I'm speaking for the board, I find it offensive because I'm going to be out of time and effort and good work as people do. I didn't ask you to resign, I asked 